Hello! Today, as promised, we are going to take a look at the animation curves. Animation curves are very, very powerful if you want to adjust or fine-tune your animation. So, first of all, to edit animation curves, we have to switch to curves right here. If we select parameter, like position on X axis, for example, and then while our cursor is over this dark gray area, we press F, it will frame selected. And here you can see, for example, in dope sheet, you can see that we have frame in zero, we have frame and 230, 330, 5, and then at 7. If you select position on X, you might see that there is nothing except for here a little bit, then we press F, and then we will see the same at 0 to 30, 335, and then at 7. All the keys you can see in the dope sheet, they have corresponding keys on the curves editor. But the difference is that here you can clearly see the position, like for example here is 0 and then here is 20, so if we select this key, it will be 19.2. If we select this key, its value will be 6.76. So here you can move um, keys like that, but when you are doing that, you can notice that we are also moving them on the timeline, rather, which we don't necessarily want. So if you want to constrain your movement only to this time frame, then you press on the key, and then while holding Shift, you can move up and down, and then your key will be constrained to this time frame. For example, we want this animation to gradually and very slowly flow to this 330 value. Then you can adjust these tangents, like so. This way, movement on X will be very, very subtle, and then it will speed up, and then it will slow down again. Let's take a look how this looks. So very, very subtle movement on X, then speed up and then slow down again. We can do the same for all axes. Press F to zoom in and then move it a little bit to the top. Same on the Z. And do the same, hold and shift, move it to the top. Let's play and see. So we have to observe very, very slow movement, then really speed up and then slow down again. If we don't want this rough jump, we can uh, go to the X axis, select this frame right here at 330, click on it, hold shift, move up a little bit, and then this way we will have a much smoother motion. Let's do the same on the Y axis, while holding shift, move it up, and let's do the same on the Z axis. So now we should see a very smooth motion towards the four second mark and then like no very, very sharp jumps and we in fact even hit the building. It was that smooth. You can notice there is something strange going on, but this is because our rotation also has this uh, values being animated. So here you can see that our rotation is delayed. So we can select the first frame and then move the tangent so that we are getting more smooth and uh, fluent motion. Let's preview that. Now you can see that our rotation started almost instantly. What we can do is we can make arrival a little bit more smooth. Right here is do same on the y axis. Y axis actually is fine. Let's do same on the x axis. Let's grab this guy and then move him down a little bit. So what I'm trying to achieve is to make arrival phase basically from 5 to 7, make it very very smooth. Also we can go back to the dope sheet and then we can actually grab this position frames and then move them to the 10 second mark. Let's have a preview of this. So very smooth beginning and then very very soft arrival. 
and you can see that camera pulls back at the end which is not what we want so we go to curves and then we observe what is happening we can see that that axis has this like little pit right here so let's select it press F okay I want a little bit more space on this verti vertical axis so we can see that we are going way too down and this producing this movement of forward and then backward at the at the end yeah this looks good this is all right this is not as fluent as we want okay now what's on the y-axis you can see that this um, continuity is not exactly perfect so you want if you want really smooth motion then you have to work a little bit on the continuity might want to drag this up or down a little bit and then adjust tangents and this way you will have this very fluent smooth curve z axis oops z axis good in um, unity 5.5 they added this like selection square which is really cool you can do lots of cool stuff with it but at this moment we don't really care about it that much we can see that okay on the X this is not smooth at all so our animation would not be that great let's adjust positions and tangents so that everything is like very fluent and very smooth let's press a play and see how it works so now our animation should be like very predictable and smooth and slow down towards the end and that's what we want basically obviously we don't want to go through the buildings but in this case it doesn't really matter much so let's um, hide this camera and then create another one and I want to show you why animation curves are so important and why you almost cannot go away without them let's create a really short animation which we will call camera turn around let's say on one second mark I want to move in here and then on two second mark I want to move in here and then on three second mark I want to make this kind of turn and move a little bit forward right like this and now let's see what my camera is doing my camera is going nuts it's because the way unity is trying to blend values and normalize them which is causing all these weird issues let's take rotation on y and then see what happens we are moving 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 and then on one second mark we have 360 359.42 which is not what we want we actually want our camera stay almost the same so let's grab this so let's just do it frame by frame let's move this about here so we almost don't have this rotation and in here as well so what we want is here we want to be a little bit more dramatic yeah like here and then for third second we want it to go all the way right here like so this way our camera will do what we want it to do yes this is something I have noticed while animating and yeah if your camera goes crazy just switch to curves and then this way you will have much more control over what's what's going on and you will also see why the camera behaves the way it, it does if you want to have a very very sharp turn right here we can actually break this tangents so right click on this and then select broken we can move this one to slowly and gradually turn to its 
current rotation and then we can make a very unnatural but super sharp turn you should see a very very sharp turn like very fast first we slow down and then very very sharp turn yeah like that there are several ways you can deal with tangents it can be either auto like this and then you can adjust them it can be flat which will just flatten them for you, which is very useful if you want to create loop. You can make flat in here and then this one, yeah, also move to zero like here. And then you can also make it flat. And then you will have a perfect loop. Or you can have a broken. And in case of broken, you can adjust them independently. I really hope this was helpful for you and uh, see you next time. Let's make something awesome.